What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to use semaphores. I don't really know if this is the right word, but I think so. But yeah, I'm going to show you how to use semaphores in C. If you don't know what a semaphore is, it's a way, uh, like I don't know the exact word, but it's something that allows you to do things in order when you have several processes or threads in a program. So for example, in this program that I'm going to show you, what I what we have is that we have two processes. The child one, which is this one, and the uh, father one, which is this one. So in the child one, we are going to print one and three. And in the father one, we are going to print two and four. The thing is that, yeah, we want this to be in order. And we know that if we don't use anything, this is not going to be in order. Like the, the one who is going to give order is the computer and it will give a random order. Like it depends on the resources it has available. And for example, we could have one, uh, four, three, two, whatever but we want this to be in order and that's why we use a semaphore because a semaphore blocks processes and allows processes to move etc so before seeing how does this work how do we create a semaphore so for that we have to import these libraries this one is for the semaphores uh, these are the classic ones, <laughs> these are for fork, and this one is for the weight of the other process. Then you have to know that we have two types of semaphores. We have named semaphores and unnamed semaphores. We are going to see this one in another video because we also have to use shared memory, and we are going to see that in another video. So yeah, the thing of, of uh, name semaphore is that we have to give them a name and they are stored in the, in the so, uh, operative system with a name. So for example, we have this name for this first semaphore and this name for this second semaphore. Then we have this function semopen and again, if we go to the man page, let me open the Ubuntu terminal. If we go to the man page of sem open we are going to see all the information about semaphores we see all the libraries that we need and yeah for example here we have the the arguments that the function have so for example here we have first the name of the semaphore then these which er flags for example uh, these two together do that if you already have this semaphore open this function will return an error so yeah, then this other is for read and write. And the last one is for the value of the semaphore. We are going to talk later about how the semaphores work. So then we do the same for the second one. And well, we are going to talk now about that. So yeah, how do, how does, how do the semaphores work? So for example, here, what we do is that, okay, we have the child and the father. And the child is going is the, is the one who prints a one. So we want the child to be first. So as you can see, the child starts executing itself and the first thing that it does is print. But the father starts executing itself and the first thing that it does is that it uh, waits for a semaphore. This function, what it does is that it takes the value of the semaphore and it decreases it by one. So when a semaphore is at zero and we try to decrease it, the process that try to decrease this value is going to be blocked. So now the father is blocked here because the, the semaphore uh, is at zero. And yeah, this process sem one tried to, to decrease this value. So until this value is not increased, like let's imagine that it's at minus one. If the value is not zero, then the process is blocked because now it has minus one. But once someone adds a value to this semaphore one, the process is again not blocked. So that's what we do here. So once the child has printed this, 
it posts, it moves up the value, and then this process that was blocked is unblocked and continues here, is unblocked from here and prints this. The thing is that after uh, posting the value, after using these functions and post, the child process waits in the semaphore too because this semaphore also has the value at zero. So it decreases the value, it's zero, it cannot be decreased, so it's blocked, and then until someone unblocks it, it won't work. So here is when, after we print the two, we unblock the process, and then we go out from here, we print three, here we, we get blocked again, and here we unblock again the process. So that's it, like as you can see, it's very useful. Just You just have to know that if you have a zero in the semaphore and you try to move down the value, like you use some weight, the process that tries that is going to get blocked. And until another process uh, doesn't do some post, if someone else does some post to that uh, semaphore, then this process that was bl uh, blocked is going to be unblocked. So yeah. Then another thing that you have to know is that you have to, to destroy the semaphore. So for example, this is wrong. <laughs> Let me put this right. This should be here. So every process that has opened the semaphore has to close it. So for example, this one has to close the semaphore and this one has to close the semaphore. Both process has to do that. But only one of the processes uh, has to unleak them, which is something like destroying them. So when do we destroy the, the semaphores? Only when all the processes have closed the semaphores. So here is when we unleak, unlink the, the semaphores. And yeah, only the father has to do it because it's a stupid to try to destroy something that already has been destroyed. So let me show you how does this work. And let me remove this terminal and yeah. First of all, we have to compile it, and yeah, this is very simple. Name, our name dot c, okay, and yeah, that's another thing I have to tell you. As you can see here, it's telling us that hey, there are functions that I don't know what are do what are what are them. Like uh, you have to put something else every time you try to compile a program with semaphores. You have to put this flag p thread mm, let me do this bigger so you can see that yeah you have to put this flag p thread so now oh wow not here so now it compiles perfectly let me now execute name and as you can see i think that you are not seeing that as you can see we have one two three four and it doesn't matter how many times we do this that we are always going to get the same order because we did it right. We used semaphores in order to have the, the, the order. Like for example, let's remove this. And you are going to see that once we remove this, the order gets crazier. So for example, let's compile and let's do this. And you see that, yeah, look, in this case, it always does this order, but this is not the order that we want. We want the first order, which is this one. And this is given using uh, using this uh, semaphores. So I hope you enjoyed and, and I hope you understood how to use semaphores in C. And what are semaphores? This was a brief summary. And yeah, if so, give it a like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Mm-hmm. Hey.